So I'd like to convene this uh, meeting of the uh, Board of Directors for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for October 19th, 2023. Holly, would you take roll? President Smalley. Here. Vice President Hill. Here. Director Ackman. Here. Director Fultz. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. Um, this portion of the meeting is for um, any uh, communications or any oral communications from the public on any items that are in the closed session. I see nobody here in the room. Um, does anybody who's online wish to make a comment? Seeing none, uh, we will adjourn to the closed session then. Um, and to the general public, we will be back in the open session at 6.30. See you then. meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board of Directors for October 19th, 2023. Holly, would you take roll, please? President Smalley. Here. Vice President Hill. Here. Director Aftman. Here. Director Falls. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think this is the most we've seen in attendance in this room uh, since we restarted after COVID. So welcome. Thanks folks. Um, oral commit or changes to the um, agenda. Um, Rick, Actually, we uh, need actions first, please. Oh, okay. Oh, the report of actions in closed session. Uh, we have nothing to report. We took no actions. Thank you. Uh, Rick, uh, staff has no changes or additions <clears throat> to the uh, agenda. Okay. All right. Uh, oral communications uh, for any members of the public uh, that want to bring up something that's uh, not on the agenda for this evening, that's within the purview of the district. Um, and I'll remind folks that uh, presentations uh, at this part and during the rest of the meeting. Uh, not to exceed three minutes in length. Uh, we do have uh, uh, an official timekeeper at this meeting that I've designated. So, Scott. Um, my warning is red at one minute or orange at one minute. Orange. Orange. Okay. If that's, if those are the colors that you have. Okay. Good enough. Uh, uh, he has two pieces of colored paper that I pulled out of the desk this evening because of the technology that we have here isn't consistently working. He's gonna hold up one at a minute, the yellow, or hold up, or orange, sorry. I'm colorblind, I thought I picked yellow. Uh, red, uh, when your three minutes are up. So, uh, simple, direct, and everybody can see it. Okay, uh, with that, thank you. I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. Um, I wanted to say some things about some of uh, the recent meetings. Um, on September 7th, the meeting started pretty much identically to this one. Uh, the uh, district secretary interrupted the chair and pointed out that he needed to give the uh, report out of closed session. Mm -hmm. So in my view, uh, that was a point of order raised by a staff member. And um, on September 7th, I remember raise you, uh, you, thanked, uh, you, you thanked the district secretary for straightening that out. Um, and this is within the jurisdiction of the district for items that are within the jurisdiction of the... Yes. Yes, okay. well, I started out by saying that I was talking about the September 7th meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I pointed out, and I'm just going to be repeating this. Um, at the September 14th meeting, uh, both Director Ackman and Director uh, Mayhood 
uh, made the point that points of order should only be made by board members. And I wanted to point out the contradiction right here in front of us tonight that a point of order was raised by a staff member. Uh, and uh, I'm getting interrupted, and I, I wish that you would admonish the um, Please other continue. Board. I Please wish you would admonish Bruce. the other board members. Please too. continue, Bruce. We are hearing you. Um, they're talking to each other. I can hear you. So, um, let's see. Um, uh, you've distracted me to the point where I, I can't remember what I was saying. The uh, when when uh, the objection was made, when the when the district secretary interrupted you on September seventh, um, there were four other, there were four board members that could have made the same point. Mm -hmm. There were three staff members, district manager, mm -hmm. district council, district secretary that all could have. So there were seven people that could have made the objection, and one of them actually did. So in my view. If none of the seven had made the objection, it could have been made by a member of the public. So I don't agree uh, that members of the public should never make a point of order. And I want to point out the three most common ones is report out of closed session, uh, public comment, somehow skipping over public comment. And then the third one that comes up pretty often or might come up is um, staying on topic. Because it's a these are all legal requirements. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to address <laughs> for yes. items that aren't on the agenda? Absolutely. Okay. So, in preparing for an item that is on, uh, I've been looking at a lot of CTV here in a minute, and much like Bruce Holloway has pointed out, with this meeting and past meetings, sometimes the agenda item is quite bad. Okay. Was being discussed, or something that has been discussed pretty seriously was not on the agenda. And I'm finding that as well in other meetings. I'm also finding that it's really difficult for people like me to get a real understanding of what was discussed because sometimes the minutes don't really reflect what was discussed. And I know the answer is we'll just watch the CTP thing, and that's like hours and stuff, but it would be really helpful if the minutes could hold to what was discussed and decisions made, important discussions, even though the decisions aren't made. And in looking at, um, again, preparing for another agenda item, I ran across a term called scrutiny committees. I've never heard it, but apparently it's quite common now. And I know we have an admin committee that could probably be looking at this, and I'm just going to suggest that and maybe the, the district should consider scrutiny committees to make sure that the minutes and the agendas are under some kind of professional standards, um, particularly with brown experience. And I also found some pretty big differences in the uh, September 14th meeting of being against what was on the CTV that I watched and what is in the minute. And uh, this is going to be a real shock to you, but not everybody can come to the meeting. This is pretty hard for us to come. Um, I just got my COVID shot. <laughs> I, I needed to come up here. I um, We do not have a phone or a service that allows me to go online. We don't have it. Our computer's 12 years old. And it, does, it, is, it doesn't work in the way it needs to be compatible with this. I'm not alone. There are a lot of people who do not have access. And when I watch CTV, my service cuts out. I have to watch sections. So if there's anything the district would like to consider doing to make it a lot more easier to get accurate information, preferably on the minutes, I like reading the reports. And that would be helpful. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Um, I see nobody else. Here in the meeting, I'm trying to check uh, uh, attendees um, attending remotely. I do see one uh, to address us on an item that's not on the agenda this evening. Uh, Cynthia? Yes. 
I would like to express my personal appreciation for Rick Rogers and all his years of service to the Water District. I moved to Felton in 1984, so was involved in the construction of the Kirby Street Treatment Plant and the flow movement to consolidate with SLV Water District. A few years ago, I was concerned about the use of water from Fall Creek to supplement Boulder Creek sources, and Rick met with me several times and patiently explained the reality that Fall Creek was inadequate for Felton at certain times of the year, and at times received water from the northern part of the district. It eventually dawned on me that sending the water north was a much better plan than to let it flow out to the ocean, as it would eventually flow downstream after making its way through houses, septic systems, creeks, and aquifers. Conjunctive use, in other words. I regret that I have not been more vocal in my support for Rick Rogers and other staff, <clears throat> which most ratepayers realize have gone above and beyond to keep water flowing, reduce fire hazards, and keep rates lower than the reality of our conditions here would dictate. The district will have to pay a premium to recruit a competent replacement for Rick Rogers now that it has a reputation for being a hostile work environment. This may affect recruitment and thus operating expenses for a number of years. I'm very sad that I did not do anything to express my appreciation previously and would like staff to know that there is support for increasing wages and benefits and for any actions the board may take to improve working conditions. I just want to say I also really appreciate the board members. You all give so much time and <clears throat> under very difficult circumstances, you're, I really appreciate your talent and your willingness to contribute to this community. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, I see another uh, attendee uh, attending remotely. Uh, Nicole um, Launder Burbage. Nicole? Hi, this is Nicole Launder Burbage. Hi, I'm with Brackenbray, and I want to express um, uh, a concern about um, the district manager leaving when we're right in the middle of negotiating the consolidation agreement. And I was hoping, um, based off of Past concept, past, sorry, I have COVID, so I'm a little stuffy, but based off of past discussions, when Rick had um, been talking about retiring and had not set the date, there was some indication that he could possibly manage special projects. And I would like the board to consider um, having Rick Rogers stay on for special projects such as the Bracken Brave Four Springs consolidation. Um, I do appreciate all the help that he has provided over the last three years for Bracken Brave. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, seeing uh, nobody else attending remotely wants to speak now, I'd like to move into uh, the next item um, on our agenda. Um, unfinished business, uh, the Quail Hollow Road failure. Uh, since the district engineer is here to present this item. Here. Um. We've received the final billing from the contractor and staff recommendation is to authorize an amendment to the existing $600,000 expenditure of time and materials for an additional $367,646.99 for a total not to exceed amount of $967,646.99 for the completed emergency storm damage repairs of the portable water main in Quill Hollow Road. Okay. Um, for the public that's not um, kept up to, to speed on this, uh, Rick, could you give us the one minute uh, summary of, of what this is? Well, <clears throat> since I'll, we have. I'll try to because this is, it, it got complicated, but back in the early part of uh, um, 2000 and 2023, during a, a heavy rainfall, um, Quill Hollow Road had trench failure around our new pipeline that was put down the roadway. Several areas of the trench uh, became uh, undermined and the road opened up, uh, creating some very hazardous conditions. Uh, at some points, we've had to close lanes and even close the road until steel plates um, were put across the road to uh, restore traffic. 
it became very problematic as, as we explored to see the extent of this undermining and the erosion uh, around the pipe. There was considerable undermining. Um, we brought in a granite rock at, at first uh, as an emergency. They addressed some of it, and then we brought in um, uh, Anderson Pacific uh, to continue. And as we kept digging up and pile holding, we found more and more voids um, from uh, the atmospheric river events. Uh, we hired consultants to, to review it. Um, we found many possible reasons, but most of the reasons pointed towards uh, heavy underground flow, spring flow uh, off the mountain there above Quail Hollow Ranch that caused the erosion. Um, so this result of the uh, 900,000 is making repairs and repaving of all that damage. Uh, we have submitted uh, this is a claim to FEMA because it is definitely, uh, we believe, uh, storm damage uh, related. Okay. Do you want to add anything to that here? Or... That was kind of quick and dirty. That's good. Uh, that's That I think uh, summarizes it. Okay. Uh, questions on this from the board? Um, and this is an item that the board has heard about uh, several <laughs> times over the last few months, uh, just for the public's uh, benefit on that. Uh, Bob? No. Joe? Hmm. It's one of these kind of sigh questions where you just say, oh, gosh, one more thing. Um, but I, I don't think there are any alternatives. So, no questions. Jamie? I was just going to say that it might be worth sort of rehashing the, the issue around the county standards, um, you know, and why that contributed to this complication, particularly for people in the audience who may not have followed it as closely. Um, okay. Well, to follow on Jamie's point, um, the specification that we had from the county, I wanted to uh, follow up on staff with that. Um, have we gone back to the county? Uh, so the county uh, agrees that in certain areas that their standard or their spec isn't appropriate yet. Have we had any discussions about that? I'll let you, Garrett, uh, we did have that discussion. Yeah, we met with the county prior to performing the repairs and presented the details of the proposed repairs to the county and they were accepted. But I, I don't I, I don't want to say for the Quail Hollow. Yes, I understand for Quail Hollow. I'm saying on a bigger picture, the broader picture going down the line so that when um, you're not here two years from now, Garrett, if that happens. Um, and Rick is that the institutional knowledge of that standard that gets issued to the district again, and it doesn't get used. It wasn't correct for this environment. I would agree with that statement. Okay. The, to my knowledge, the county has not updated their standard detail. Okay. And so do early, we... early on in the process before Garrett, when Josh, Josh Wolf right. originally worked with the county on right. the original holes that opened. And the county did state that hindsight slurry backfill was probably not the right type of backfill for that application for that because it was a sand, the, the right. ground out there is all sand, and that the slurry backfill caused uh, a, a layer that deflected flows. Okay. And hindsight, that probably wasn't the best thing to use. Now, whether that contributed to it or not, right? There are so many different possibilities that we couldn't put our finger on okay. the one. And we had multiple but, experts because we were concerned. But the county was thinking uh, that. Okay. Yeah. Um, to uh, to Jamie's point, to, to describe to the to the public, this slurry backfill in the trench is essentially uh, like putting in a a fairly loose cement. That loose cement in this long line that goes down Quail Hollow, water was hitting it, wasn't flowing past it, and instead was going this way and washing out sand from around the pipe. Washing out that sand allowed the road to collapse in several areas. That's what we've been repairing. Um, that up, allowing the sand to flow out was due 
the county thinks, we think most likely, because of the detail that we were required to follow that the county issued to us. So um, with that base background and basis, uh, I want to put out a motion. Um, the board directs district manager to amend the not to exceed amount to $967,640. Forty-six and ninety-nine cents for the emergency storm repair damages of the potable water main in Quail Hollow Road. Second, Can I make a friendly amendment. Sure. Um, yeah. Could we include in the uh, uh, motion that the that we would like the staff to document the um, different, you know, the unique needs of this particular area, so that. We know so, so that we basically have a standard that exists somewhere. If we have to go in and replace pipes again in uh, the the you know sand hills, that mm -hmm. that there is a record of what we had to do here, so that we don't just follow the county standard again if we are issued the same standard in the future. Does that you know? I just feel like we need documentation here so that we don't make the same um, challenge for ourselves. Um, Can I suggest? That's, we, that's if, a separate motion. I, I was going to say separate the same motion? thing. That's, yeah. I was going to say I think, the same thing. Why don't you propose separate, that as a second motion? Because we don't want to muddy the water. From it? from this, and I don't know whether that's tonight or that's part of uh, the engineering committee to discuss at the next meeting that you hold, Garrett. So if you could bring that to us as an item, and sure. then we could come back to the board with here's a proposal for what we're going to. Yes, uh, that would be to kind of address both. One, uh, the county aspect of the county telling us again, because I expect that the same thing would happen again, that they're going to. Uh, and then two, how do you propose to put the district in a position going forward, given you know, loss of institutional knowledge, uh, so that we don't do this again in these centers? So I don't need an answer tonight. Think about that. Bring it to the next engineering committee meeting so that we can discuss that further and then we'll bring it to the full board. Okay. All right. Uh, so I had a motion out there. Did we have a second on I that? I seconded it. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so uh, for this item on Quail Hall Road, does any of the public have uh, questions or comments on this? Seeing none here, I see none online. Uh, so, Holly, would you? Take roll, please. President Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> under new business, the next item is to change the title of district manager to general manager. Um, Rick? Uh, that's leading. Uh, I think this. that's Jeff's. That's me and Jamie. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, in the process of looking for replacements for Rick and uh, looking in general at other agencies, uh, we concluded that the term general manager was a more descriptive term, uh, more quickly made it clear to people that that person in that role was managing the entire district and that that was pretty much the, the standard term uh, for similar districts and similar roles. So uh, since we're in the middle of recruiting, uh, we decided uh, it would be a good idea to uh, change the title and uh, make it a clearer picture of exactly what uh, what we're looking to fill. Okay. Jamie? I just wanted to add to that. The reason that behind the change is that when you are searching for jobs, like if you're Googling for jobs, um, district manager, there's a lot of district managers that have nothing to do with this kind of work. There's district managers in sales and auto parts. And mm -hmm. so it, it just ends up getting lost. And general manager is a title that people who do the kind of work leading 
organizations, special districts like ours, more typically are using now. And so when someone searches for general manager, our job would come up. And so that was what we were thinking, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of just aligning it with more easily accessing the people with the kind of backgrounds that we would be looking for for this role. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would like to propose the motion to change the title to general manager. Second. Okay. Uh, Gail? Makes total sense to me. Okay. Bob? Yeah. yeah that's fine. Okay. Uh, I, I agree with that. Uh, does anybody from the public want to comment? Excuse me, though, but we do have a resolution, right? So do we need to frame the motion differently given it's a resolution? Yeah. Oh, I, the um, motion was to change the title of the district oh, manager to the general manager. To adopt the resolution. To adopt the, yeah. 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 to adopt the attached resolution changing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody from the public? Uh, seeing none here, seeing none online. Uh, Holly, would you take a roll call vote? Please? President Smalley. Yes. Vice President Hill. Yes. Director Ackman. Yes. Director Pulse. Yes. Director Mayhood. Yes. Okay. Uh, that concludes that. Um, now on to the next item. Uh, response to damaging impact uh, of Director Foltz uh, having on the district. Um, Gail uh, and you and Rick wrote this, um, issued this memo. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. At the last board meeting on October 5th, I asked the board to discuss Director Fultz's treatment of staff. This request was triggered by Kendra's, our director of finance, re resignation and her making it known that disrespectful behavior on the part of Director Fultz was the main reason for her resignation. She said this in her letter of resignation, which Rick distributed to all board members on October 2nd before the last meeting. I'd intended to include the letter in the agenda packet, but district council advised that such personnel matters are generally not uh, made public. In any case, Kendra repeated much of the substance of her resignation letter in her remarks at the October 5th meeting. Coming as Kendra's resignation did shortly after Rick Rogers moved up his retirement date because he could no longer tolerate the impact having to deal with Director Fultz was having on his health, my reaction uh, was both dismay and a sense of enough is enough. We have to do something. The abrupt departure of two members of the management team has left other staff and the board scrambling to pick up the slack and find interim replacements. In both cases, we're losing important institutional memory that would have been transferred during more orderly transitions. The current crisis is the culmination of a long-standing problem with how Bob treats staff. And it is a result of a pattern of behavior, not simply a few negative encounters. The memo in the agenda packet lays out what Rick and I perceive to be the main ways in which Director Fultz's behavior makes for a difficult work environment for management staff. The first is that Bob's manner of addressing staff at board meetings is frequently perceived by the staff as demeaning and dismissive. For the Director of Finance, who bore the brunt of Director Fultz's most critical and most elaborated questions and statements, this respectful behavior became a serious source of stress. Members of the Board of Directors are bound by the district's respectful workplace policy, just like members of the staff are. And in our view, Director Fultz's behavior has not been consistent with it. Second, at board and committee meetings and in his request for information from staff behind the scenes, Director Fultz frequently attempts to insert himself into the details of day-to-day -day operations of the district. And this is contrary to the role of the board as defined in the board policy manual, where it states, and I quote, the primary responsibility of the board of directors is the formulation and evaluation of policy. Directors shall not be involved in day-to-day -day operations of the district, end quote. Director Fultz also involves himself with day-to-day -day operations by engaging in private back-and-forth communications with ratepayers who have committed complaints about district activities or decisions. When he does this, the staff feel undermined. It's also contrary to board policy manual, which states that all complaints should be referred 
through the district manager. And if they're not resolved there, they should be brought to the attention of the entire board. In all three of these areas that I've described, there are costs in terms of staff morale that affect performance and retention. There are financial costs as well, as staff members spend time trying to anticipate Bob's objections to the work products and spend time unnecessarily dealing with non-essential requests for information or revisiting issues with the public that have already been dealt with by staff applying normal district procedures. I'll leave it to Rick to provide some examples of um, the intrusive nature of Bob's interactions with staff and with him as district manager in particular. While Bob's interactions with management staff are the main topic of this memo, it's important to realize that this behavior at meetings has ripple effects on the entire staff that may not be readily apparent. For example, I cite Bob's comment repeated at board meetings that operating costs and headcount, so-called, have increased since 2017, but he can't identify any benefit ratepayers have received from these increases. Statements like this make staff feel unappreciated, that Bob thinks they're doing, they are not doing enough and that he believes the district is uh, overstaffed and that the head count should be reduced. Unfortunately, other board members, myself included, usually let this and other insensitive statements by Bob go unchallenged because to engage with Bob's polemical comments only serves to give him an opportunity to carry on in the same vein. But our silence has a cost, and it is that it's interpreted by staff, and now I'm talking about all staff, not just management staff, as indicating that the board agrees with Bob and the board doesn't support them, and that's simply not true. One thing I hope the discussion of tonight's agenda accomplishes is to send a clear message to all our staff that other board members do not share Bob's views and that we have empathy for the difficult conditions that they've all been laboring under since 2020. It's up to the board to discuss and decide whether they see things similarly to me and Rick. I anticipate that this discussion will be uncomfortable for the board because it involves publicly calling out unwelcome behavior by one of us. But the abrupt departure of Kendra and Rick make it apparent that previous efforts behind the scenes to influence Bob's behavior have had limited success. This makes it the responsibility of the rest of the board to consider what, if any, actions should the board take in the interest of better protecting the district staff going forward. To my mind, the goal of any action should be in the short term to stem further staff losses and to make sure that our future general manager and director of finance experience healthy working relationships with all board members. In the longer term, the goal is to increase the positive impact of the entire board on the efficient functioning of the district. And with that, I'd like the president to recognize Rick so he can add some comments. Um, Rick participated in this memo, so yes. Yeah, well, yes, thank you, um, Well, first off, I want to say I did participate in this memo. I spoke with Gail in depth and reviewed this in several drafts of this memo, added my comments, and work uh, um, putting this memo together. But yes, uh, Gail is a much more eloquent writer than I am, uh, and um, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact that for years, I have been complaining to board chairs and to board and to district council behind the scenes about interaction um, and the issues uh, with direct reports going all the way back to the CZU fire and so forth. And we have always kept this within the, the board family. Um, I, I believe that's a mistake, and I appreciate, Gail, that you bringing this to the public because I do the public part of the, the meeting because I do believe that the public should know about the uh, the working situation here at the district. You know, we don't have a working relationship with Director Fultz. We have an adversarial working relationship, and it has caused many problems. A lot of time is spent trying to salvage uh, working relationships and to provide additional data and information that Director Fultz requests that no other board member does request. And subsequently, we don't believe that data makes any real difference because it still winds up in a no vote, moving ahead on budgets, working agreements, et cetera. 
the comments that he sees no uh, returnable benefits on staff and the comments that we didn't lay a, any staff off after we went to uh, uh, the turnoff for non-payment on the tax rolls are very damaging to our staff. We do have an exit that's going on. We did lose Kendra over the budget process and the uh, rate study. And there's potential for other management employees that voice concerns, and they're taking a wait and see approach uh, with the new management. See, there was this feeling that I that I shielded uh, the management staff from uh, this type of uh, uh, behavior. Very difficult to work, even back all the way to the CZU fire, I was getting daily emails complaining on my, on my uh, outreach and I was doing a horrible job with social media and working around the clock with staff, keeping people in water. And then I'm getting, you know, uh, emails saying that I'm not doing a good job. And, you know, that reflects all of my staff. At the same time, I had two staff members working around the clock that lost their homes uh, to the CZU fire. Um, it's very difficult when you're bored and board members do not support staff and they work against you. And this is a common feeling with staff. There's no support with staff and Director Foltz. I understand that there's uh, a concern with fiscal responsibility, but you can have fiscal responsibility at the same time you're complimenting your staff for a job well done and that's not the situation. With that, I'm not gonna just keep going on. Uh, I'll let it go with that. And again, I hope, uh, thank Director Mayhood for bringing this to the public section. Okay. Uh, before we start discussion of uh, what's contained in this memo, um, I do want to say, I don't want to make this a bash Director Foltz um, discussion. My hope is that we could come to some uh, resolve here or something that better supports the staff um, that doesn't uh, give the staff the feeling that board doesn't care or that causes the staff to scratch their heads to say well maybe i should be going also if the board's not willing to make any changes to this um so with that um as a preface soliciting comments. Um, I do want to ask uh, other board members here two, two questions. One, um, Gail and Rick put this together uh, with a, a problem statement and then uh, suggestions as to what might change. Uh, first, is there a problem? Do you see a problem here of the board members? Second, um, to the suggestions that are made in this memo on pages 43 and 44. Uh, do you see anything there? That, uh, or another suggestion as to what might uh, improve the situation here for staff? So, uh, Jamie? Um, so, to your first question, I, I think that anytime you have a water district or a, an agency sure. as small as ours. Um, you know, there's not a lot of redundancy to our staff. We we don't have a deep finance department if we lose our director of finance to rely on. We don't have a giant executive team to backfill for the general manager if we lose the general manager. So I think that there's, you know, a certain amount of collaboration that you you have to you know and compromise that you have to be willing to make um because everybody's working under difficult conditions right we've been working for years under and when i say we i'm talking about the staff because i'm not out there doing this work um for years under incredibly challenging conditions you know, starting with the CZU fire and and all of the things which we've talked ad nauseum about um, that the staff has been grappling with, in addition to running the the you know matters of the water district and ensuring that our customers stay in in water and ensuring that we can cover our revenue and and pay our employees fairly. Like th these are all really challenging things and. Um, I don't think 
that Director Fultz has offered staff enough grace. I have made my views on that pretty clear on multiple occasions. Um, I also think that uh, there is a responsibility that comes with being on a board to recognizing that we have to ensure the healthy day-to-day -day function of the district that we oversee. And if the but district that we oversee loses its, you know, all of its most senior staff, what kind of job are we doing as board members? So I feel like based on the, the staff departures that we've just seen, and frankly, past things that I have heard privately about other staffing issues with the water district, that this is an appropriate step to take at this point to address the issue. Now, um, I would love to discuss more with some of the solutions that are laid out here, but I, did I answer both of your questions? You've answered the first question. Um, uh, do we do you see an issue here? Um, so I'd like to transition to Jeff and then we can talk uh, the potential solutions. Um, but I wanted to hear first, do we see a problem? Yes. Um, I'm the new guy on the board. Uh, but I have seen uh, clearly times when Bob's questioning of staff has been, uh, I, th I thought, unwarranted in its uh, pointedness and uh, abruptness. Um, you know, I, I don't need to go through a whole long litany of things, but I, I do think we have a problem here, and I think the the issue here is how do we resolve this in a way that gets staff and the board back into harmony? And uh, I know I've had some direct interactions with staff, but I always go through Rick and I've always taken, you know, I'm 77 years old. I've been an executive in business for years. I take a coaching approach when I work with staff. I have a number of places where I work with Kendra. And I my approach was coaching, not criticism. And I think that's a, a thing we could all work on. Okay. All right. Um, before I ask Bob, uh, I wanted to weigh in on this also. Uh, and yes, I see that there's a problem here also. I'll cite one example. Uh, one of the staff after a board meeting earlier this year, uh, contacted me directly the following day to say that comments that uh, Bob made at the meeting about how they were doing uh, their work uh, were not the way that he would do it and felt that the comments were uh, offensive and demeaning. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and I'd like to give Bob the opportunity to to first address the is there a problem here? I'll I'll have a statement later at the end. Okay. All right. Okay. Well then um I do want to talk uh in on to the next uh item. Um because the four board members here see that there is a problem. What can we do about that then? Uh, so there's uh, four items here. Let me just uh, go down these. I'll read them off and see uh, from the rest of the board. Is this something that um, district manager may excuse staff other than the district secretary from attending board meetings to minimize adverse interaction? Um, is that an implement implant is that something that we could implement effectively and have an effective meeting um so i see you wanting rick well i i would hope that we wouldn't have to resort to that because mm -hmm. that would put a tremendous strain on the manager to be able to answer all of those questions that the board may have or collect questions and return at the following meeting I mean, I do believe the management team provides great backup uh, and information to the board 
that I as a manager may not have. Um, and it would be a, a difficult task for me as manager or for the manager to answer mm -hmm. questions. Um, it's good that the management team is here right. uh, and can provide uh, that level of detail. But uh, that is possible one way of, uh, of doing it where just the manager shows up to board meetings and tries to answer all questions. But that would be a last resort. I would hope that wouldn't be the outcome. Okay. Um... But this is something that uh, you and Gail. Well, that could be. Made, made yes, that, that, that is definitely okay. an, an option. You know, at one time, the general manager was the only staff member showing up at board meetings oh, many okay. years ago. Uh, and uh, then the director of operations started. And then as our workload started to expand, mm -hmm. it was obvious that, you know, more information and the board wanted to hear more okay. information. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jamie? Here to speak to this. I mean, my comment to this would be that um, obviously a, a general man, a future general manager, may not be able to make every single board meeting. Mm -hmm. And so, if you don't have any other staff that are routinely attending board meetings and participating, you're talking about someone stepping in on an occasional basis that really has no relationship to the board or the regular ongoing discussions at this level. And I just. Yeah. I think that that would be, you know, challenging to just put that all on the general manager alone on an ongoing basis. And I think also that the the next general manager, whomever that might be, may want to weigh in on how they want to manage their staff interactions during board right. meetings. So I don't know that making a okay. decision about this would be helpful. Okay. Yeah, I would just comments. echo that that this this wouldn't actually be a board decision. This this would be the sort of decision that a, a district would manager would make on a you know case to case mm -hmm. situation, and maybe even different uh, you know individuals, but right. also different situations. And so, I think it's as Rick says, it's a it's a last resort, but it 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 is one that I think it would be appropriate for district manager to implement if it was necessary. Comment, Jeff. So personally, I uh, appreciate having staff members come and present their own projects. It gives them a sense of ownership on their projects, and it gives them a chance to see how the sausage is made here in terms of decisions by the board. And it gives us a chance to see their skill levels and uh, and their knowledge. And I, I think it's important, frankly, that the uh, staff members who have projects that they need board approval for should come and present their projects. Uh, it's a good way to move them up the, up the chain of decision making somewhat. Okay. Uh, I would find that uh, burdensome in the meetings to have that kind of a, an approach because um, even if we all as board members submitted all of the questions that I have right now on an agenda item as presented in the agenda pack, submitted all of that in writing, um, I think it would be burdensome on the general manager, uh, since that's what we're now calling him, uh, to meet with staff prior to the meeting, have all of those questions addressed, come back to us and say, here's what my staff told me to the items that general managers not intimately familiar with. Um, and not all of the questions that we as a board have uh, are something that comes up as I'm reviewing the packet. Some of the questions that somebody else is asking and the answers cause another question to come up or can you clarify that first? So I think it would be difficult to, to do that, but okay, it, it's an option. All right. Uh, the next was uh, all questions submitted by Director Fultz at the board committee meetings must be directed uh, at the district manager who can decide uh, whether to answer the question himself or pass it along to the relevant staff member. Uh, Rick? Yeah, you know, that would be one thing we could do. 
I mean, I, I don't know if it solves the problem. It, it, mm -hmm. it just moves it around, so to speak. Um, you know, I, and you wouldn't want the, the general air, the, the district air general manager uh, to have to, you know, be the go between and, and, and have the same types of situation going on. Right. There's an, you know, an aggressiveness towards uh, the district manager. I, Anybody weigh in on that? I, I think that it's if we have if we're agreeing that staff is going to be at board meetings, like right. it's you know hard to say <laughs> one member of the board can only speak to one. I mean, because all the staff is hearing the question, right? It's not right. like yeah. you know the the issue here is that um, the staff feel disrespected in the way that Director Fultz engages with them, and I don't know that you know redirecting all of his questions and comments to the district manager now general manager solves that problem. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I think I might suggest another solution be well, added to the consideration something. here. There's other suggestions that could improve this for staff. So, to, a suggestion and then a question. Um, my suggestion would be that we um, add a bullet or consider a bullet that might direct, you know, the, the general manager to have the discretion to tell staff what they are and are not responsible for responding to and what they can and cannot ignore. And um, and then I think that, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, comments and questions coming in that are outside of a board meeting, you know, that, or instructions, if they are going to other members of staff and they shouldn't be, they should all be going to the general manager, that the general manager then gets to say, you know what, that's, we're not dealing with that because that is outside of that board member's purview. And I will let that board member know that they have gone beyond, you know, what is necessarily under their auspice because i think that that's you know part of this is that you know the the general manager should be empowered to make those decisions about board interactions particularly in the way that they affect staff but my question is and i i open this to the board i've worked for as staff to elected bodies my pretty much my entire career and typically when a board member is behaving in a way that's problematic you would consider a censure um, and that's not among the, the items that we're considering here. I'm not saying that I necessarily think that that's the right solution, but I am saying that our, is there a reason that we're not discussing it? Okay. I don't. Uh, Gail, Rick, you put the memo together. Is yeah, that I, I think, um, I mean, obviously. That that would be something that we could have included that or the, slightly below that would be a reprimand of some sort. But um, rather than labeling or having us vote on something like that, that um, just seems excessively contentious, I, I, I want to solve the problem. And I don't think that a censure or a reprimand solves the problem. And so I, I think that's why Rick and I just kind of push that aside as as not uh, being something that's all that productive that causes lots of heat and you know but uh, flames and whatever but doesn't really address the the fundamental issue which is that that we would like director Fultz to interact with staff in a different manner okay okay uh I thought about that also, Jamie, before this meeting, censure, and everything that I see going on um, in other agencies where I see that come up. If the individual isn't interested in change, doesn't doesn't do anything. It's a slap on the wrist, and it lets the public know that we don't like this individual, but it doesn't change anything. Doesn't change anything. So I don't want to do this. I don't want to do something like that just to, I don't, just to take that action. What what can we do to make some change? That you know that either Bob says, okay, yes, I recognize this. And I'll do differently, or that we can put something else in place that makes makes sense. So, can I comment on the all questions part? 
Because I didn't get to say something. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I recognize the difficulties of, of having sort of, you know, one rule for Bob and, uh, you know, other people. But I guess what I would advocate is that um, it is common courtesy when you have a complex or contentious question to let the recipient know about it beforehand. I mean, this is, you know, when when I chaired the faculty senate at Stanford, the rule was is that you would send the question to the president before the meeting so that both he wouldn't be blindsided and also so that you could actually have an exchange because the person he could go and get the information that was needed and you could talk about it. And so in the case of staff, you know, doing that courtesy takes away some of the fear of being blindsided or embarrassed in a meeting, but it also means that you can have uh, better discussions at, at meetings. So I guess what I would argue is that we should all do that. And because Bob tends to ask more complex and more pointed questions, that perhaps is more important that he do it, um, but th that we should be moving towards that as, as a as a goal. That's not to say that there wouldn't be questions that would come up at the meeting, but uh, that that would be, you know, one approach that would take some pressure off the, the staff. And um, yeah, and and then the, the other part is that, you know, the, the district manager can, at his or her uh, discretion, uh, basically, if a question comes in at a meeting that just is off base or they feel, you know, they, they could step in and say, no, we're, you know, you don't have to answer that to a staff member or, or just tell them, the director that 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 really isn't you know, within the scope. Yeah, within the scope of what we're talking about, or it's too complex, and we'll get back to you, or whatever. So that that's that's what it, I I understand that the way we phrase it here may be kind of unworkable, but I think that there's a intermediate ground that we could. Work Wait, so I'm I'm not clear on uh, what you were saying here. Are you suggesting that uh, we submit? All of our what, questions. what I'm saying, what I'm or, saying is, I think, and this really gets to the fundamental problem that we have, here, is that there are norms of behavior that you don't need to put in explicit rules. And those norms of behavior are that you show people respect. And one of those norms, for example, that I was just giving the example of the faculty senate, is that there's no rule that says you must send in your question to the president. It's just considered good form. Um, mm -hmm. the most productive thing for the whole body. And so there's a norm of behavior that is out there that everybody agrees to and adopts. And what the problem I see fundamentally is that four of us operate on kind of a, a shared norm of behavior in regard to our interactions with staff. And Bob doesn't share those norms. And I wish that he would. And if he did, then this would largely disappear. Um, okay, so oh. go ahead. One of the things that this all highlights is that as an organization, we do not seem to have a process mechanism, what have you, for resolving issues that are whether based on facts or personalities, but when there are conflicts like that, um, we don't seem to have a process for dealing with that. And it's been my experience over the years that that sort of issue is best dealt with early on and bringing the parties together and reaching an understanding between them. And I think one of the things we as a district <laughs> need to do is to have sensitive uh, conflict detectors. And when we see an issue that might be arising like this, that uh, we have a, a process, uh, a procedure of some sort to uh, reconcile the parties and see what we can do to make things work better. And I, I don't see that we have that right now. Yeah. Um. I'm following along with what you're saying. And um, I've heard Rick say that staff have reported to him. Mm -hmm. um, 
and he has conveyed uh, that information to board chairs or board members in the in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but the resignations of two senior staff in a yeah. very short period of time have caused us to have this discussion. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not. I don't know what I don't know what else as far as what staff have been doing would. Yeah, it, it, well, I, I guess what I'm saying is, I don't think any of us on the board know exactly how those sorts of issues get resolved when there's a board versus staff member issue. And yeah. I think uh, we we should put some thought into how we, uh, you know, the processes like this usually involve the two parties being brought together by a, uh, a neutral party who uh, chairs a discussion between the two of them on why are you upset with him and why are you upset with her and and what you know work toward a resolution rather than and go back to your cubicle or back to your office and and fume and and you know but I think one of the things we need to do out of this is come up with a better uh, conflict resolution. Go ahead, Jamie. I have a comment to yeah. that, but. Uh... I, I, I appreciate that that is, you know, a, a way to mediate problems, but there is a power dynamic here that we can't yes. ignore. Yeah. And and it goes beyond just a power dynamic. It's not like it's the CEO versus, you know, a, a, an employee and they both work for the board. Yeah. It, it, you know, we're talking about an elected board member who mm -hmm. can't be fired. Yep. Yeah. So if you yeah. put that person in a mediation with an employee who can be, or who could, whose whose job can be seriously affected by having to continue to deal with that board member? It's. It, I agree. It's not easy to do this. Yeah. But it's also not necessarily obvious that both parties are aware of how the other one feels. And. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, I, I. I don't know that I see a. I, I'm. I'm I would dispute that last okay. statement. I think that um, in part because maybe because I was board president for two years, I saw, I interacted a lot with yeah, Rick I, I, and with I haven't been general counsel I haven't and, this. you know, saw, and as Mark does, see, you see more of, of sort of behind the scenes. And so I, I think that, um, you know, it's, it's been pretty clear that this is, been a, a problem mm -hmm. but and i think that it's a sort of problem and it, just to emphasize what what jamie said is that this very different power dynamic that has to do with because we're not a corporation in other yeah. words if this these kinds of interactions have been happening in a corporation um bob would have gotten a letter of warning or he would have been asked to attend uh you know training or something like that mm -hmm. but you can't do that with elected you can't force elected officials to do things if they don't want to do them and if they don't change it's very difficult and so that's what makes our job the rest of us so hard because it's not obvious what levers we have uh the way yeah. you have in a in a business yeah. if i could add one more thing sure um i i think that we we have to have this conversation and structure some kind of a strategy because our staff have brought this issue not just to us now but to the public mm -hmm. and if we just okay well that's too bad you know two people quit because they don't like them off we go hopefully we'll you know find new replacements um what we're saying to staff is we don't care that they are feeling under duress too and that just reinforces the problem right um so that's all that I want to say. Okay. Uh, so there's still uh, two uh, bullets here. I think one of them we've sort of addressed yeah, already. Sorry. It's the questions and submitting those to uh, staff. I think we've already sort of done that. Yeah, that one we've already addressed. And I think the last one is uh, by board action. Uh, remove Director Foltz from the Engineering and Environmental Committee to lessen opportunity for adverse interactions with staff. Um, 
being the chair of that committee, um, I don't, I don't agree with this uh, recommendation at this point. I find um, Bob's participation on that committee useful. Uh, he has differing viewpoints uh, with me at times, but then there are other times where we're thinking along a similar enough path, but have different ideas on how to get further down that path that um, it's helpful, I think, to get to uh, recommendations in that committee. So uh, with that, this point, I wouldn't support that um, unless unless something changes. I'll have him there. But Mark, that doesn't that that says what you find comfortable. That doesn't that address is, what the staff feels. That is that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. But I did want to reflect on that because yeah. I'm well, in those course. meetings. So uh, with that, though, so, um, let let me just follow sure. on on that. I I just want to say that if you you know I could say the same thing about Bob that I I value um, his mm -hmm. expertise right. in finance. Right. In, you know, IT, in communications. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to retain that benefit, okay. you know, and he's also a very articulate, smart guy. Right. So I, I want to retain that benefit from for the board. But that that has to be set separately from I, my concern about the staff. I, I concur. I understand what you're saying there. Uh, and I have not. Uh, personally queried staff uh, that are in that committee with me at this point to see if that's, uh, but as the committee chair, uh, I, I can do that going forward to see if that's. Um, so after discussing these, uh, I don't know that we're at any point of trying to make any kind of a motion or resolution at this point, uh, but uh, I would like to hear, uh, so what is the next step or how would we take a next step or do we move this to a committee level? Yes, we need yeah, to hear I, from Bob. I wanna hear from Bob, yeah. I wanna hear from Bob, <laughs> but at the same time, I wanna get a feel for, because we've been talking about suggestions, but I don't know that we're to a point of any resolve yet uh, on any of these suggestions. So, okay, uh, Bob? Um, we will, I think you can go to the public and I'll have something to say later. So nothing is response to my initial question. Do you see this as a problem? I'll, or? I'll have a statement. Um, after the public has a chance. To. Okay. Well, then I do want to come back to the rest of the board to say, what do we think is the next uh, step here? Where do we go with this? What do we do? Um, I have one thought, and that's do we punt this to a committee? And I, I see you rolling your eyes, JB. That was an unfortunate choice of words to say punt. Thank you very much. Um, but uh, do we do we ask the committee to you know to think about what, what we're saying here to see if this is or do we need to resolve that here as as the board to okay, here's what yes, we say. Go ahead, Gil. You skipped uh, the first thing under potential remedies, and that is to just simply follow the district's respectful workplace policy, which outlines a procedure for what you do under this I, case. I, and uh, okay, I would recommend that that's what we do. Um, and basically, it says if the board member is, I'm quoting now from the respectful workplace policy, since not everybody has it. If a board member is perceived to be the cause of disrespectful workplace behavior incident involving district personnel, the report will be made directly to the district manager and referred to district council who will undertake the necessary investigation. 
The district council will report his or her findings to the board of directors, which will take action as it deems appropriate and pending completion of the investigation. The district manager may at his or her discretion take appropriate action to protect the alleged victim, other employees or citizens. Okay. Okay. I support that as an as a first step. Um, and I just wanted to add that, you know, I I appreciate all of the thought that went into like what can can we do to make more effective working relationships? And these are all like great ideas as long as Director Faults also agrees and wants to perform his duties in this manner. Because going back to the original problem statement. We are elected officials, and if he chooses not to, then there's not a lot that we can do besides continue to have these conversations. And so I think that that is a really reasonable step, and it holds us all to the same standard. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Agreed. I, I do support that. And I would hope that having this discussion in a public forum um, encourages staff uh, going forward to let the district manager know. And if the district manager isn't responding, um, um, yes, chair. exactly. Either, yeah. either me or they have HR also. Uh, they have other, in order to be able to funnel that uh, to the board president so that, so that we can have some discussion about this. Um, I, I think that Staff has probably been hesitant uh, over the years because they don't want to feel any of the repercussion. But I hope that surfacing this now and saying it publicly, this is an issue. If you're, you have comments along this line, let the general manager know. Let me know. So um, I see two, three staff here. I hope you can convey that to your peers. That we've had this discussion. Keep in mind, you will have a new general manager. A new general manager will be hesitant. And yeah. there has been discussion brought to the board chair and to legal counsel in the past, yes. and nothing gets I, done because I, you really can't do anything. I understand. So it just yes. it has the same. Yes. We even had a, a counselor come in and speak to the board and so forth. Mm -hmm. Very difficult situation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, I appreciate you checking me on that, Gail, the fact that there was another suggestion in here. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to hear from the public then, but before we start what public comments. What do you have? Oh, did you have? Uh, okay. Um, before we start, Again, I want to reiterate, I don't want to make this uh, a bash director faults, uh, nor do I expect comments from the public that are uh, adversarial to any of the rest of the board for us trying to surface this. We're trying to improve working conditions for staff. That's our concern here. So with that, uh, is anybody here in attendance uh, want to speak? Yeah, I do. Okay. Thank you. My name is Rick Moran. I probably live in Belmont. Um, I'd like to build on what uh, Director Bill was saying. I think a proper remedy to this these difficulties would be to have the board, senior staff, Take part in training to promote effective communication. <clears throat> the 2018 grand jury made a similar recommendation to this board about when they were dealing with contentious issues. I took part in that training, and I believe it resulted in a much more civil atmosphere. The foundation of this district is built on civil and fair treatment of everyone concerned. We rely on community members to run for the board, serve on committees, and to work for the water district. We should all be assured that we will be treated fairly. As with all things, we can all benefit from a little training. 
So in that view, I suggest that the board, committee members, and senior staff receive formal training on effective communication. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else here in the audience want to speak? I'm here to provide testimony and insight from having history in the district that precedes that of Dr. Director Malouf and most of the people here. Um, my association with the district started in 2014, and I can testify that it was a very tough atmosphere. One staff member told me that they felt everyone had PTSD just about the time the new board came in 2018. There are many examples of positive impact Director Fultz has on the district, like healthy reserve system inventory and master plan that were in place in just the right time to put the district significantly better position responding to the CT fire. Director Fultz was elected to the board in 2018 with an impressive credential and then re-elected another term because we like how he works and want him to continue. Any interference with allowing him full and unfettered access to what he's entitled to do in his job as a board member is an affront to voters, to board policy, the Brown Act, and open meeting law. I've had an opportunity, as I said, to work with Rick, and that was about the Lompico merger, um, and it's on district business, and I've shared with him my opinion many times over the years on things that I've observed about this district and the underlying factors that I feel are making or play a very big part in today's discussion. And uh, in 2018, when the new board came in, they were voted in on a change platform. And those effects mainly having more focus on, pre on than previously on oversight and finance. Just one example is Director Folks asked the finance manager if he can include the if they can include on reports to the board the balance of the Calvert set, you never saw it. A few years later, that became a state requirement because that can be a really substantial debt and cities were going out of business. It was something the board needed to know and met a lot of resistance. I've heard staff members just tell him, you don't need to know that. I don't have time to answer you. I don't think that really presents a, a collaborative relationship on the other side too. As I said, there's two sides and there's a lot of background here. It was quite toxic before Director Fultz came on the board. Um, in discussions with Rick, I've also talked about um, outside pressures that we have with special interest groups that were that had control of the board at one time and are now trying to regain that. There's a little bit of kind of revenge and a lot of hostile feelings um, and professional standards. These all play a part. And I only mention them because I agree, there are very big problems in this district and that, that demonizing director folks is a symptom and not a solution. I think the best option is to withdraw this item without discussion and refer it back to the new manager if the board wishes to pursue it further. It invites dishonest debate by its lack of fact-based data being driven argument, but merely presents a singular predetermined judgment I, and conclusion that is a personal opinion. It is the district manager's job to handle personnel issues. Having a director interfere may expose the district to liability and risk as it falls outside the scope of your protected law duties. And it does not appear to follow I'll board have to ask policies. you to wrap up. Thank you. There's a great deal of uh, Labor issues on privacy that, as Gail has pointed out, the attorney prevented her from. I have to ask elections. you to wrap up. Thank you. Yes. Um, I think that we are. I'll better. have to ask you to wrap up. Thank you. That Thank means you. Um, uh, your time I is up. I have one more thing I'd like to say. I'd like. Happy retirement like, to Rick. I really appreciate I'd all like you to work. wrap up your comments, and please. Thank you, Director Fultz, for all you do. Uh, anybody else here in the public? Um, Go ahead. Eric Martin from Boulder Creek. Um, I'm here. I agree with the employees. Um, contrary to popular belief, I believe the board has failed the employees by not insulating them from the day to day issues at the board versus their day to day issues at the job. There's one person and one person only that any employee as a member of the water district reports to is that man. Now, he can delegate authority for answers. 
But any answers that you guys need is policy. This is not something that, this is not a water main burst. This is not a hole in the ground. This is policy stuff. This is bigger picture stuff. Everything that the board wants answers to should be submitted in writing to the director. And then he can delegate the people to get the answers. And if it doesn't come to a conclusion at the meeting, then it can be carried forward to the next meeting. But having members messing around in the day-to-day -day operation of the of the water district is absolutely unheard of. And I've worked in one-man shops all the way up to multi-billion dollar corporations. And this is, I have never seen this kind of behavior before. So I say, this is the board's problem. This is not the employee's problem. This is the board. And my suggestion is, is one point of contact. Any of you have a question, you ask him. Put it in writing. No, give me a, call, give a phone call. Give me an answer right now. Submit it in writing. I need this within three days or 72 hours, whatever you want to call it. And then let the manager delegate, get the answer, submit it back to the, the individual board member that needs it. I think that would solve a lot of the contentious behavior and hurt feelings people. This politics is, is a full contact sport, as you all know. It's not, it's not pretty. It's not painless, and it's quite messy at times. But that should not bleed over into the district operation. And by just eliminating the board from the day-to-day -day operation, and if you have questions, submit, submit them to that chair right there. And then you can go on with your business. They can go on with their business, and nobody gets hurt. Um, in my world, if somebody's quitting because of bad feelings, that's a hostile work environment. And that means that all of the board is allowing that hostile work environment to occur. Not these people, they're just doing their jobs. So I think you guys probably could come up with something where you just step back from the day-to-day -day operation, let these guys do what they do. And if you have questions about what they're doing, submit them in writing and let him answer the question. That's all I have, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Jim Mosier, I live in Belton. First, I just want to thank all all five of you and the board for your dedication to the water district and to the staff. Um, and I want to say that I was very dismayed when I learned about uh, uh, Kendra's uh, sudden resignation and uh, Rick's decision to retire early. I know this puts the district in a really bad situation in the midst of a lot of crises that we're facing, a rate study. Um, and recovery from all the damage done from the fire and the floods. I was dismayed, but I can't say in retrospect I was surprised. Um, I've witnessed uh, Director Fultz's behavior at the, the board meetings. I just hadn't translated into that how that would make staff feel. Um, and I think you need to recognize the potential long-term impact of this, both uh, from earlier times as well as in the future, which is that as we get a reputation for having an unsafe and unhealthy work environment, it's going to be harder to recruit people to these jobs. Um, and that may have already been happening since we've had so much trouble recruiting people. We don't know what the word is out there, but this is a relatively small work uh, community and the word can get around. So I think it is a problem that needs to be addressed and I appreciate the board bringing this to the attention of the public. To me, the challenge is that we need to be working together. We need to work as a team, all of us. We need to have support and respect for each other and work to be collaborative rather than adversarial. Uh, I believe that Director Fultz has very important contributions to make to the district that he's already made. I respect his opinions. I often disagree with him. But that disagreement doesn't mean we can't work together in a collaborative and respectful manner. And that is my goal, personally as someone who's been quite active as a citizen in water uh, district uh, activity. Most importantly, I'd like to say um, how important it is, I think, that we express our support to staff right now so that they understand that that is our goal collectively. Um, and I want to say that what Cynthia uh, Denzel said at the beginning of the meeting is something I feel quite strongly. Also, I want to thank Rick for his long service. I think it's important that we uh, demonstrate to the staff how appreciative we are of the hard work they've done through these very, very difficult situations. Uh, the Friends of San Lorenzo Valley Water had this discussion last night how we can do something to 
uh, as ratepayers to let the staff know that we respect them, uh, we thank them, and we want them to feel that they work in a healthy and uh, a community uh, with ratepayers who really care about. Them. Thank you. Okay. Um, I see two. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I. Let me let me call up a couple of folks uh, that are uh, attending remotely, and then we can come back if there's anybody else here uh, in the audience. Um, I see two right now. April uh, Zilbert, you've got the floor. Thank you. I'm April. I'm a Felton ratepayer, and first I want to say I honestly I appreciate each board member for their unique set of skills and experiences that you're bringing to decisions they have to be made at the high level about our water district. I serve on a nonprofit board. I've been facing a kind of parallel situation recently where I feel that other board members <laughs> are being very um, demanding rather than thanking me for my work and then asking me further questions. And so I see how, you know, maybe even just ways of figuring out how to frame questions so that staff don't feel like their competence is being called into question. Um, that might be helpful. Uh, certainly communication training could be helpful. The nonprofit board I serve on is rather unruly. So <laughs> I, for my case, I've asked the president to make sure to enforce Robert's rules and to make sure People don't talk too long and go way, way past the time allotted on the agenda. And it's this is a different situation here in this board. But I think there's a way to still take advantage of everybody's um, knowledge and experience and have meaningful questions, but not have it feel punishing to the board, to the staff. And that's super important. So thank you. Thank you, April. Um, Alina Lang. Hi there, Alina Lang, Boulder Creek. Um, I've also had the pleasure of serving for the past three years on the Environmental and Engineering Committee uh, with Bob Fultz. I'm going to start off very positive that I think that this last year working with him has been my best year. Um, I I do agree to a point uh, with. Uh, uh, President Smalley, that he's had some wonderful insights into uh, the current issues this past year. And we've been able to come to a point where we do work as a team. Uh, but I do want to back that up to the first two years of working with Bob Bolt. Um, that were extremely, extremely challenging. And I did witness him um, raise his voice or yell at staff and he has also yelled at me i would view one example of when he screamed over and over again of what my agenda was um and to the point like it, just didn't, it got to uh director smalley said okay and we're moving on and it it was horrible and every time i showed up to a meeting it's like all right, here I am walking in to be yelled at. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a volunteer committee person. And, and walking into that environment was extremely tough. And I can't imagine being a staff member and having to go through multiple meetings um, a month and dealing with that. It's draining. Um, so I just wanted to add my perspective. I think that, that Bob has some really great knowledge. Uh, gr great knowledge of our district and how it functions. And I do appreciate uh, what he has to say on the committee. And if he could get, just continue the trajectory and the respect that he's showing there across the board, like I feel like we, we could move on. But um, I think that he needs to make that change. But anyways, I am sorry that we're losing the senior staff that we are. And um, I'm glad this got brought forward because it is basically the reason I I ran um, in the last election was to unseat Bob because I, I didn't think how he was treating everyone was fair. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, Elaine Fresco, you have the floor. Hi, Elaine Fresco, Felton. 
Uh, mostly, I just want to thank Gail and the other directors, Gail, especially for writing this up and bringing this up. I think it's really important and it's been um, ignored for too long. Um, and the other directors for taking this issue so seriously. Um, I agree that Director Foltz has many, has, has um, added many positive things to the district. However, that does not take away from the seriousness of people uh, resigning because of feeling that they were intimidated or demeaned. And I am now waiting to hear from you, Director Fultz, to see what your response is. I hope you are a mensch and that you acknowledge that some of these uh, people that have had a problem with you and resolve to change your behaviors for the benefit of the district. Thanks. Okay. Um, I see nobody else online yet. Uh, is there somebody else in the audience that wanted to speak? I see. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm, Bar I'm Barbara Springer from Felt. Oh, here. Felton. Thank you. <laughs> um, and respectfully, this isn't a new issue. Bob and I served together on the school board for many years, and I think it was the same pattern. So I do want you know to say that that has been there. The only, I think it's very important that the only power of a board member is your ability to get others to agree with you. An individual board member has no power. Um, and I think that's an important statement to make here. There's two things that I think are really important for the board to do very quickly. One <coughs> is a resolution on changes that you are going to make. You have no power to change an elected board member's behavior as, as Director Ackerman so beautifully said, but you do have the ability to, to give yourself some tools and, the, and it's basically tools for the general manager and for the board president. Um, and I would suggest that uh, if, and I'm sure most of this is already in your, in your policies, but that as you said, that you establish and you write out the board norms so that the board members send questions ahead of time. The general manager does not respond to those directly back. Those are just gathered for the for response at the board meeting. And when they come up, anything that requires um, any board time, any staff time, the president of the board gets a sense of the board, and those are directions to the board to get to the GM to, to get the information only if it is a sense of the board, okay? So the two things, I, I uh, respectfully disagree on the issue of censure because what that censure statement does is it tells staff, we this is important to us and we will take care of it. And that's why it is an important thing to do. It's not just a slap on the wrist. It's a statement to, to, to them. Um, I, I think, it, yes, it's basically uh, the message to the, um, to the GM about how he has the tools to protect staff and respond, um, you know, stop the statement in the middle and say, you, that is not for you to respond to now. Does the board want us to get this answer? So that's basically what I wanted to say. Those two things, they need your... Um, they need a, a, a board resolution, and they need perhaps a censure statement so they know you're there with them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I see nobody else online, nobody else here wanting to comment. Uh, Bob, I need to give you the floor. Great. Well, as everybody knows, there's two sides to every story, and We'll see that come out in time, should the board wish to pursue this as vigorously as they seem to intend to. 
<clears throat> excuse me, the past five years have most definitely been a stressful time for our community and district. The pandemic, CZU fire, storm damages, Josh's tragic death, supply chain issues, two district manager transitions, and the need for money as embodied in the upcoming rate increase. Not to mention a critical grand jury report and significant turnover in board membership. Public service is difficult and conducting business in public is stressful as well for everyone. Regardless of where we stand on any particular issue or what disagreements we have, the community should be proud of the fact that the water continued to flow. It's also important to realize that we agree more than we disagree. I think this fact sometimes get lost in this, the disagreements we have about budgets, money, and the rate increase process, as well as the role of the board members in a public agency. A truly transparent democratic process can appear chaotic, especially over these fundamental issues. That reflects the nature of our community as well, where not everyone agrees on everything. I do my very best to keep a focus on policy, not personalities, as well as a focus on my fiduciary responsibilities to the people I work for, the voting community. I also recognize that we are all human and understand that my vigorous advocacy for positive change made with the best of intentions could very well be perceived differently. Our respectful workplace policy makes room for differing opinions, honest debate and constructive criticism essential to our system of open government. For us, the message is to focus on business and not make it personal. And that is how I view my role as a board member. Early on, I was told by a former board member based on her years of experience, that board members have the right to ask anything and see everything regarding the district operations within the limits of the law. That seemed very logical to me and fit with my view and our board training that the primary role of the board is oversight, particularly with respect to how money was being spent. And within my campaign promises to work towards positive changes and transparency. In fact, the CSDA, the California Special Districts Association, explicitly states in its board handbook, and I quote, overseeing finances, boards ensure sound fiscal policy exists and that practices and controls are in place so that the district board, general manager, and staff have direct accountability to their constituents. Mm -hmm. Accountability means oversight. Oversight means scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Scrutiny means questions. In my view, it is impossible for a board member to fulfill their fiduciary responsibilities to the community without asking questions. Our district doesn't have a robust onboarding program, and so in lieu of that, questions are the substitute. I'm happy to say that some of my questions have resulted in improvements to the district's financial reports, and I thank both Kendra and her predecessor, Stephanie Hill, for those in public. Our district is constantly being watched and measured by our community and beyond. A 2018 grand jury report reviewed our district and identified contention between the board and district manager on one side and community members who are exercising their rights to free speech on the other. This inherent right of citizens to bring grievances to the board is the responsibility of government to protect, but instead the district was trying to control those community members. With the election of 2018, the community was no longer excluded from the conversation. There may still be disagreement, but there were no longer overt acts to shut down community input into the process. That represented a dramatic cultural shift, and I'm proud of the fact that I helped usher that in. Unfortunately, the apparent need for control is now shifted to within the board, causing needless conflict. Outside of well-defined boundaries and free speech, which have been established by the Supreme Court and Robert's Rules of Order, in my opinion, the best approach is to let people have their say about policy, especially on contentious issues. I'm very concerned that this action will send a chilling message into our community that free speech is not valued, which I believe to be the antithesis of our system of government. Let me be very specific. I will continue to engage with community members and discuss issues as it is my duty to do so particularly if they have exhausted all other avenues for their grievances. I will continue to be transparent with our community and encourage us to reflect reality in the financial supporting the rate model and process. Facts are sometimes uncomfortable. 
We have a history showing the operating expense increases in past rate models have, with one exception, always been exceeded by actual budgets. Let's agree to make the process match reality. I will continue to ask questions of senior staff and senior staff should expect questions as part of our oversight role and fiduciary responsibilities through the general manager. Without this oversight role, our district would be no different than most private companies where community concerns are ignored, as was the case in Felton. Answering questions is part of the job <coughs> of staff at any public agency. I understand that this district has historically not had a culture of directors asking a lot of questions, but I would also point out some undesirable outcomes that occurred in the past due to directors not asking questions. I'm concerned that we may be taking philosophical and process disagreements to a place where a vague, though I'm sure well-intentioned policy is being weaponized against core political speech of a member of this agency's governing board. I'm concerned that a successful weaponization will metastasize over time. Regardless of our disagreements, I wish Rick a happy retirement. He served the district for many years. Likewise, I wish Kendra success in her new position. She made improvements that benefit the district and our community. Where do we go from here? I'm always of the opinion that there is room for continuous improvement in everything. That's because humans aren't perfect. I agree with Rick Moran. It might be worthwhile to do another session on contentious issues with an emphasis on getting to the core of the disagreements and figuring out a better way for presentation of dissenting views. Also, with a new district manager coming soon, I believe it is prudent to hit pause. That person may very well have a different approach. To make decisions for that person that would in any way limit their ability to freely interact with any member of the board is counterproductive. I look forward to establishing a good working relationship with that person, which I hope will include ideas about handling questions that are vital to providing transparency to the community and support for the board members' community, excuse me, board members' fiduciary responsibilities. I will continue to do my best to focus on policy, but I will vigorously oppose any attempts by this board and our district to suppress my speech, my ability to communicate with our community, or my critiques of the district's approach to the rate increase process or any other topic with which I have an issue. I believe we need to refocus away from us-them politics and get to work, perhaps reminding ourselves of CSA's directives that all of us, board and staff, have direct accountability to those we serve, the voters. Thank you. Hey, well, I wanna come back to the rest of the board um, after what Bob said. Uh, personally, I see no recognition um, in what he has responded to the uh, primary issue that's being brought up here, um, his uh, treatment of staff in particular here at these board meetings. So um, with that, I'd like to hear from the rest of the board and see uh, where we might go with this at this point. Jamie? So I would like to recommend a proposal for how we move forward. Um, first, I I have heard from multiple members of the public about a conflict resolution training of some kind, and I think that that's a really good suggestion. And I'd like to ask that the admin committee take that up to consider, you know, go a contract to uh, identify a consultant or coach that would do those kinds of things. Um, and that's uh, so that's a first uh, step that I'd like to suggest. And then second to that, I I think, and I don't know if it's tonight or if we need to come back with a more formal resolution. Mm -hmm. But I think that formalizing the first recommendation that Director Mayhood um, identified at, on the uh, list of potential solutions um, that directs staff uh, to bring concerns about behavior through a process. Um, uh, you know, I think that, like I said earlier, I think that that's a, a you know, a, a a firm, good step that we can take that holds us all to the same um, accountable standard of, of conduct. Um, I think that there's a, 
you know, I, this is such a difficult issue because, um, you know, the fact of the matter is we are not the first elected body to have an oppositional member that that is, you know, frustrated with the way that the the um, organization that they are now elected to lead is is um, doing business. And um, and so I think that we would have to consider any steps that we take in the larger context of setting precedent for future board members. Um, <clears throat> but I do wanna say, so that's my suggestion and recommendation. Mm -hmm. and then I just wanna respond separately to something that Director Fultz said about how he engages with the public. Um, I agree that it is our responsibility to hear from the public, but in, in my experience, the, the the method for doing so is that you take in a public question or concern or comment, you bring it to the staff, and you first ask them to engage with the member of the public because I think that one of the things that can be really problematic when a board member engages directly in ongoing conversation with a member of the public who's raising concerns, you are crossing the line from policymaking to directing day-to-day -day actions because you are now perhaps investigating main breaks or you know uh, what main you know other kinds of problems that are being brought to you by a member of the public without the input of staff and that is not our role our role is to set policy about how generally those things are handled not to go engage on an individual basis in investigations about what is happening with any specific community member so I, I just disagree. I think that, that Director Foltz crosses that line from policymaking into engaging in day-to-day -day direction of activities of the staff when he does that. Okay. Uh, Gail, reflection on? Um, I guess my reaction is similar to yours. I saw no uh, acknowledgement in Director Foltz's comments about his effect on staff. And instead, he turned it into a polemic about his rights his, uh, to uh, right. speak his mind um, or ask questions. Nobody's disputing that. Right. And uh, to, to deflect to that is just trying to avoid that. And frankly, I'm disappointed that he couldn't even say something like, gosh, I had no idea. I'm really sorry. And I'll try to be better. Right. I mean, that would have done for me it would have been a start okay but we don't but he can't even do that and so what that says to me is that something you know that brings to mind what barbara springer said is that maybe we have to look at the idea of reprimand or censure if you know if he's not willing to even acknowledge that this is an issue that he's damaging the district um then maybe we have to go farther I, I think in theory, the idea of bringing in, uh, you know, somebody to talk about conflict. But the problem here is this is not conflict. Bob tried to turn it into conflict that was among board members because we disagreed about things. That's not what this is about. This is about behavior that's directed at staff and affects staff. The the conflict that we have among the board, you know, I. That's okay. I, I signed up for that. Yeah, that, exactly. That, <laughs> I'm putting it, and so I think that that's that's to be expected. Um, but so uh, I, yeah, I I think that what I would um, like to do is to make a motion that um, we uh, direct the district council to undertake an investigation along the lines of the respectful workplace policy regarding Director Fultz's behavior towards staff. That is a motion that I'm placing on the table. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, Jeff, comments? On the motion or? Uh, just, just in general at this point. Um, so factually, I don't disagree with much of what Bob said. The problem here is not that you don't have control of the facts or that you don't know what is right for the district from a financial point of view. The issue is how you go about 
um, expressing that, particularly with staff. And in my mind, you've missed the point entirely. Um, so that's where we are. We're not saying you're wrong about what you want us to do from a factual point of view, from a budget point of view. We're just saying the way you go about it is not good for the staff. Okay. Um, Bob, anything else you want to respond to? Well, I'm since we have a motion out there on the table. I'm assuming there'll be due process. And as I said, there's two sides of every story. And as part of that investigation, we will get into it. Okay. If the intent is you're going to have a one sided investigation, then okay, you can do that. But um, there's a lot here that we're going to have to get into. I'd like to say that I don't think that we want to direct the investigation, right? Like we don't. No, no, no. But I'm, 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 I'm yeah. a, I, I get that. I get that you that the board wouldn't do the work, but there's two sides to every story in all of this. Okay. Then, uh, and and if we're going to get into that, then I mean, I I think it's a uh, um, not going to be particularly productive, um, but. Okay. Okay. Um, I would like to ask our council to comment on that. Um, Barbara, in light of what uh, the motion is at this point, uh, can you reflect to us how you might go about this? What, what your process might be? Well, generally speaking, when we're asked to do an investigation and what would be considered a, a workplace issue, we would hire an independent investigator. It's not something that I would do okay. or anybody in my office would do. We would actually hire somebody independent. Um, and so in this instance, it's a little bit different because as directors, you're not employees. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a little different situation. Um, and I, 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 I'm actually thinking about it. I, I was looking at the, at the memo and, and, and the policy. Um, and curious of what might have been in mind with the adoption of that policy. But I it reads very similar to what we would do under a personnel issue. And so that's what I have. To base it on is when we are asked to do something like this, we hire an independent, and, and some of those independents are lawyers. Um, generally speaking, that's their their labor type employ uh, lawyers, and they have the you know the, the background and the skill set, etc., to conduct those type of investigations. And obviously, they're very independent. That's the whole point. Is it somebody that nobody, it's somebody new to the district. It's not something that's already known. Um, and that's probably, I mean, that's what I would recommend that you do. It, you, you wouldn't have your district council actually conduct it, but I would be the one to um, engage the independent and then uh take the first draft of what would be considered a confidential investigation and test it for any factual inaccuracies, et cetera. And then uh, it would then become a final report. And you would have to determine if you want that report to stay confidential, be public, et cetera. Again, we usually do this in an employee-employer setting. So it's a little different to do this as a um, with regard from uh, to a board member. That's my that's my immediate reaction to it. Just okay. to have an independent an independent right. investigator come in, and they would okay. obviously talk talk right. to each board member, okay. etc. Right. Thank you. Um, any of the other board members have a question? Um, I think it's time for us to draw this to a close. Okay. Uh, at least for this evening. I think we've kind of reached. Okay. We have a motion on the table in front of us, though. Um, 
but thank you for that gift. Uh, we have a motion on the table in front of us. Uh, does anybody from the public, now that we have a motion, want to comment on that? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Rick Brandt, again, for the beautiful town of Um When I heard Bob speak, I heard two points where he was making some sort of, uh, I wouldn't call it an outright contrition, but he agreed in principle with what I think Jeff was talking about and what Jamie was talking about and what I was talking about, some sort of appropriate training that has a precedent within the water district. And he also said that no one is perfect, and he included himself in that. Now, I don't know if you, you know, can take small steps or those steps as uh, exactly what you need, but uh, besides kneeling down and genuflecting to everybody here, I think um, Bob has made some uh, important statements about his uh, willingness to uh, resolve this issue. Thank you. Okay. Um, I see one individual uh, participating remotely. Mark Lee, you have the floor. Um, Thank you. Mark Smalling, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. We can. I think uh, the Bob's response was perfectly. Uh, Contritious. He talked about representing the people who voted him into office, and I think these. This is a a problem where the the issue of it uh, of actually trying to punish Bob is ridiculous. This is weaponizing policy based on back background politics between other policy other board members here. And I think it's it's a disgrace. And I think it's more it's better stop wasting money, work together. If Bob wants to, uh, if you recommend a communications program, that's fine. Why waste more money on attorneys? I think this is ridiculous. And I'm I'm re, I'm I'm actually directing the the question to those board members who would make such an absolute ridiculous. Uh, motion uh, to censure or punish Bob. He's worked his butt off for this district for a long time. He's a very valued member of the community, and it's absolutely absurd. It's counterproductive. He's made his comments, as uh, other members of the uh, the community have said, that he's been contritious in his statement. I would recommend that you drop this whole this whole motion completely and get back to work representing our interest. Period. End of story. Thank you. And I also see Alina Lang wanting to speak. Hi, I just want to uh, say I agree with this motion, and I'm I'm a little disappointed that Bob couldn't take a little bit more responsibility for his actions on this, and also just to point out to the public that while we're talking about two senior staff, the body count probably more realistically at five. And that doesn't include like committee members that are on the subcommittees that um, have also been lost because of his action. So I just, just to see, say the bigger picture on that. And um, I, I just, I hope Bob that I, I really do appreciate your input and I hope you take a little bit more of an internal look about how you speak to people. Um, especially women, uh, I think that is a, a, a bit, a little bit of a bigger issue there too. Um, because I do want to see you continue with your expertise on this. I think everyone just wants to feel a little bit more respected and valued that are in these conversations. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I see that Elaine Fresco would like to speak again. Elaine, you have the floor. Um, hi. I, yeah, I just want to say I, I, I felt like I'm sorry, but Director Fultz didn't hear anything that anyone said about the way he has hurt the district. He's helped the district, but he's also hurt it. And these are two separate issues. And I don't think anyone was is uh, taking issue with his policies. It's his actions that have 
hurt the district in terms of money and staff. And that it, just like that's there and it needs to be acknowledged. So you have like basically one and a half positive. Okay. Uh, thank it. you, Elaine. Uh, anybody else in the public here want to speak? I don't know. I don't know who it was. Uh, Can you mute the people online? Uh, their mics are off now. Yeah, I don't know who that was. Okay, please. Yes, and, and again, back to my experience with the toxic culture that existed in this district before and was not addressed. And the staffs having real PSTD problems as they described itself years before Bob came on the board. I think what we're missing in this is staff training. And what we're maybe missing in this is really looking at our job descriptions. These are public positions. But I heard the particular employee that was resigning said she didn't want a public facing job. She didn't want to work for a board. She was very happy in a job before when she worked in the back room without so much scrutiny. We know that Rick was going to be considering leaving in 2021. I think when his last contract was up, he considered it. So it's a little bit of a stretch to say this is a sudden departure. And I'm not denigrating anyone's reasons for leaving. But I think these are very high pressure positions. And if we are not supporting staff and being able to know how to communicate or work with the public, being on videos, preparing reports, that's pretty stressful. Yeah. So whatever you intend to do to this board member, the next board member, who you don't like what they say or their methodology, again, there is another side to it. We need to prepare staff to know how to act professionally, that we know that they can be told that we appreciate them, maybe as has been suggested, other methods of showing appreciation. but. Demonizing one person for faults that have been in this district for since I've seen it since 2014, I think is a really wrong path. And I suggest you really think rethink this. I agree that it's way over the top to hire an attorney to investigate this. This is something you can resolve yourselves. You have the policies in place. You just need to follow them. Thank you. Okay. Um, on August 30th, uh, the board had a closed session and came out, and uh, there was a what appeared to be a carefully crafted statement about uh, general manager retiring. Uh, it didn't say anything about his health, and it didn't say anything about Director Fultz. So when I when I read this eight page memo this week. Um, I guess I felt like the board wasn't really uh, wasn't really honest with the community on August 30th. I don't know how you came up with that statement, but you seem to have reversed. You've got a whole new reason uh, why the general manager is leaving. So I think you you let us down on August 30th. Thanks. I respond to that. Uh, like Jamie, let me see if there's anybody else here from the from the public that wants to speak. Tim Mosier from Felton. I just want to say briefly, I support the motion. We need to realize how damaging Bob's behavior has been for the district in terms of losing senior staff. It's it's a really serious problem that he did not address, and we need to take action. Thank you. Okay. One more from the public. Eric Martin from Boulder Creek. Um, again, hiring an attorney and a private investigator to investigate a situation that's already happened. The results are already in. People are leaving. Um, to just confirm that possibly Bob might not have behaved in proper Robert's orders or even workplace behavior. My question is, you're going to spend that money for one situation. What happens when the next board member that comes on in the next election reverts back to the same behavior? You're not doing anything 
to prevent the staff from having to deal with this by insulating the staff from board members via either paper or electronic communication, 90% of this will no longer be a factor. And spending my money to hire an attorney and a private investigator to come get to the bottom of what already happened, the bottom is already there. He's leaving, general manager's leaving, or district manager's leaving, and the finance director's leaving. So you're basically closing the gate after the horse is out, but you're not putting a lock on the gate. You need to insulate the workforce from the board. And that is the true solution to this problem, not hiring investigators and attorneys and throwing money after a situation that's already hit. Fix it so that it doesn't happen again. And that's my point, is when you insulate the, the staff from the board decisions, all of a sudden they can do their jobs. They don't have five bosses, they have one. Not him, not him, not him, not her, not her. Mm -hmm. Let these guys have one boss, and then they can make him dance out publicly to their tune. And that's just my opinion. So I, I, I vigorously disagree with the spending of more money in a district that already has stated that there's financial issues, while at the same time you're talking about rate increases. So you can throw more money after a situation that's already occurred. I disagree vigorously. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Um, but before oh, you, all right. Jamie, well, you wanted to comment based on yeah, some of the comments. I just, I, I think it's important to say for the record that the, the board is subject to personnel policy. And we can't just reveal personal information that our employees give to us about their retirement or health or any other issues that they may bring to us in private. Therefore, when we reported out, we, we were not authorized by the staff member whose issues that were being discussed in that context to say anything further, nor at that point, to be perfectly frank, did we have a whole lot more information. Some of that came out later. So I just think it's it's unreasonable to think that that the board should discuss personal personnel issues in open session without the authorization of the personnel members who are being discussed. Okay. Gail? I, I just wanted to respond to Mr. Martin. I, 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 I do agree with what you said, and I guess I was a little bit surprised by our district council response um, because uh, the, our policy says that the district council undertakes the study. And if it starts to, and we certainly are not talking about a private investigator, that, that would never come up. You know, and if we were starting to talk about some expensive thing with hiring an outside lawyer, I, first, that's not what is in, is in the policy. <laughs> it's not what's in the policy. Well, what, and so what, I guess what, what I would like to say is like. that we should that that would be something that would be discussed, that we should do what's in the policy and not turn it into something that is elaborate and costs a lot of okay. money. Okay. Uh, well, with, with that comment then, and with what our council was saying earlier about that, uh, <laughs> and we come to some uh, resolve then, Barbara, on what on what you heard with this because if it's an outside investigator my first question is tell us what that's going to cost and how long and how long it's going to take but then i also <laughs> want to know what's the likely outcome if you find what the rest of what are, where does that get us is my yeah i what i what i indicated is what we would what we do under those circumstances. I've never had a policy that says, "Hey, district council, go investigate this board member for these reasons." So you asked me how I would do it, and I'm saying I don't have a context for that. This is what I do have a context for. So there, there certainly can be dialogue about what you want done. It's not a private investigator. It's that what. What you do it in in the an employee employee situation, it's it's usually a labor attorney, and that's part of what they do. That's that's part of their job, and so 
I would have to talk to somebody like that and say, under this situation, what would you charge? You know, et cetera. Um, oh. I don't, I don't do those things. I'm not, I'm not right. a okay. labor and an attorney, et cetera. Right. So, right. so I that's promise. that where, where it's going to get you is yep. if, if I independently, let's say I did it and I independently come to the same conclusion as the four of you are reaching, then you're right back where you're, where you're at. I mean, um, yeah. make recommendations. It, it goes to the district manager, it says, and then at their discretion, take appropriate action. Or bring back my findings, and then you'll take the action you deem appropriate. Okay. Uh, I don't think that solves our solution. Problem. I, I'm sorry, Jeff. I, I could hear what you were whispering, but I, I said I don't think that solves our problem. All right, then I will. Uh, I, I don't think that's the correct reading of the wording in the policy. But if uh, I'll, I'll well, just, I'm happy. I'll withdraw the motion because I, I don't. I don't want to. If, if if I mean, one thing that would come out is that some of what we have now is just hearsay. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you had, and what I expected that would happen is that there would, somebody would go around and talk to individual um, staff and get their take mm -hmm. on this and whether there's an impact or not and under what circumstances. Mm -hmm. And that to me illuminates what we should do. If it turns out that it's just a few positions or a few contexts that is useful information, but um, I or, or I agree. I don't want to get in. If if Barbara, if you don't want to do this and you want to hire a, a legal, uh, you know, some kind of labor lawyer, um, I I think we should discuss this further. And I withdraw my motion. Thank you. It, yeah, I think that it's it's just I'm just reading. I have it sitting in front of me, and I'm just reading what it says. So I'm not I'm not paraphrasing it or anything. It says the district council will report his her findings to the board of directors, which will take the action it deems appropriate. So you have something in mind that I, you know, that do an I investigation in your report. Um yeah. yeah, it just when you say investigation, it's it's what it, what is intended by that, right? Well, can I enter? Jill, Gail, at this point. Um, <laughs> is it simply instead of investigating, interviewing yeah. staff? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and also interviewing Director Foltz at the same um, in, and other in, board members. In response to, well, but I don't know, Gail, that the board, I think Barbara's heard from board members this evening, we've identified. We're trying to protect staff. Do we as board members have? We have observations. Um, yes, I, I agree with that. Okay. Well, Barbara, given that, um, we're not asking you to investigate, but simply interview as an outside, I don't want to say third party, but an outside party that's not directly involved with the rest of us here at the board to then come to some conclusion presenting it back to us without hiring another attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark? Uh, yeah, I can certainly talk to your staff about you know, know. their their experiences. Right. Okay. Um, Let, let's well, be, let's be clear though. The district council works for the board. Yes, she does. That is not a independent I, investigation. I didn't, I didn't say that it was independent. Well, okay, this gets into the issue of due process. Um, and So the um, only way that we can figure this out is to go spend more money for the independent that we don't, the four of us don't want to do because we're constrained because we can't use Jamie? The tools... Excuse me, Barbara. The tools that are available to us as a board to reprimand a board member whose behavior that we don't like are censure. Mm -hmm. That is why this conversation is so complicated, because we are trying to do something that is outside of the 
process that you typically take to handle these kinds of things. Right. Right. We have uh, testimony from Kendra on the record about her feelings and treatment. I don't know what what more an investigator would would develop in that. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Um, we have our, testimony from right. our uh, general manager. We even heard tonight testimony from a long-serving committee member who has had similar experiences. I think that, you know, if we're going to do an investigation, we're only going to have, or, or an interview, I guess, we're only going to have more, they're, they're just going to say the same things. So I, I, I guess my question is, yeah. at some point, then, okay, let's say we do the interview, and they come back and say, all these people said these same things to us, so they must be true. What are we going to do with that information? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Mr. Martin is right that we need a policy to ensure that board members are, you know, going through the, the general manager. I think that it's probably going to mean um, tabling some of that until we hire the new general manager and maybe the board puts together some kind of like guideline for how we would like the new general manager to manage board member interactions and to you know prevent staff from becoming involved. And I, 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 I hear what you're saying about this is not a board problem in terms of training, but I do think we're going to have a whole basically brand new senior staff. We've, we've just hired on Garrett. We have a new temporary director of finance. We have, and we're still looking for another, you know, finance person. We have, we're going to have a new interim general manager, hopefully at some point very soon. And so having maybe some kind of like, let's talk about how we can do better going forward might be helpful. So I, I, I think that, that um, we as a board have to consider whether we want to spend the time and money to investigate things that we already have. Mm -hmm evidence on the record for um i would i would say if we are going to do that we need to start a a balance sheet for the cost that director fultz has, has you know subjected the district to as a result of his behavior um because director fultz is always very interested in managing costs and uh and then i think that we need to make a decision about whether we as a board are going to censure director fultz um i heard Similar suggestion, Jamie, from a member of the public using the word censure, that, that that's where we should be going. Um, to your points of, is interviewing other staff going to get us any farther down that path? I don't know that it does. I, I've, I've had personal interactions with staff that have but I'm not relating who, but you know, it's similar. So is that where we're going then? Censure. I don't know. I'm Gail. I, I think maybe we're <laughs> reaching the limits of our ability to resolve this tonight and that we might need to think about it some more. I, I retracted my motion. Yes. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of things that have been said tonight. Um, and I guess I was really, really hoping that I would get some indication of, from Bob mm -hmm. that he heard what we were talking about and we didn't. Okay. And so I personally need to think more. I, I need to like let this settle in and think more about what I think the appropriate action is. I think you've suggested some things. I'm not optimistic about the effect of uh, training. In theory, it should be, but I know that uh, Rick Moran suggested this back in the years, and I, I was watching the board interactions before. There was the training. I watched them afterwards. I saw absolutely no change in behavior in, in the board. And I know from that there were some people that thought that that training was a waste of time because, and that Bob didn't engage. So I, I'm not sure that, you know, if you don't have somebody that really wants to change, all you're doing really then is, is punishing the victim. You're dragging all of the staff in to do something when you don't have the one person that needs to come to the table, right. participate. And I'm, I'm not willing to do that to staff. And I, I agree in theory, but I think that 
history has shown that that's not going to be a very good thing to do. So I guess what I'm I'm saying is it, I'm I'm getting the point that I, I need to think about it. I'm I'm not sure that I would be able to make a motion tonight and again about what we should do and maybe we shouldn't. So um I don't want to let this be the leaving this discussion unfinished. Um uh, Gail, since you and Rick put this motion together. Are you willing, as I think you're saying right now, go back and think about this, come back based on everything you've heard here with a, a briefer memo. Here's what. So that so that the board could look at suggestions. Yeah. I hear you saying you want to go think about this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I'm, I hadn't, you know, I because of Brown Act things, I haven't talked to people about this. And right. so hearing people's response to Rick and my memo is this is all, you know, new information to me. Yes. So I think yes. that, uh, you know, to expect us to make a, a, a quick decision maybe yeah. is not really the best idea. Right? right. It's kind of a snap decision. And okay. maybe we all need to go home, think about it, sleep on it and think yes. about it. That's that's what yes. I'm saying. And I'm I'm willing to to come right. back to the board at some later time and, okay. and do this but i yes. guess okay. i guess what i the, the main goal and you know and i think i hope that we accomplish that tonight was that no matter who spoke everybody is supportive of our staff right and they want to make sure that this is a healthy work environment and that everybody's treated with respect and i don't think there's any disagreement about that and so i just want to make sure that you know and i think hopefully we've let our staff know that and that this is something that we're going to work on. Okay. Questions, the chair? Sure. Would it be appropriate um, to uh, task the administrative committee with coming up with a board interaction guideline that we would like to offer to the new whoever it is general manager? And that could be something that, I mean, obviously we'd have to come back to the board for consideration, but. Um, there, there is annually the board policy manual gets revised and mm -hmm. so some of these things could be taken up in that context and that would yes. certainly be something that that usually happens in january yes. early january mm -hmm. so, so the admin committee could potentially to, to bolster that, but. Uh, suggestions that we've been hearing here is to either one how to empower the general manager further or to empower the board president further on how to control um, uh, what either one of them might consider to be unruly behavior. So yes, I think that, that would be appropriate for the admin committee to uh, consider that based on everything that we've heard here tonight, as far as set better boundaries, set better rules. Uh, the general manager is the is the sole point of contact. Well, well that, okay. that rule is already there. Right, I know it's already there, <laughs> but how do we better emphasize that? I don't know. Or well, what tools do we give yeah. the general manager yeah. to, right. to you know, exercise yes. that authority? Right. Yes, right. Okay. Then if the admin committee is willing to go wrestle with this for a while, <clears throat> we have two different two different tasks here at this point. One, trying to come up with the, with the boundaries, and then Gail's agreed to go back and think about this and come back with um, reflections or thoughts on suggestions on what else we might be able to do. We're not asking our legal counsel to do anything further at this point. We don't have another motion at this point. Simply that this is a discussion to be continued. Okay. okay. Then I think we are uh, concluding that item and I'm searching for my agenda to see what else, if anything, uh, is there anything on the consent agenda? Uh, since we've concluded that item, the consent agenda, is there anything there that uh, 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 somebody wants to comment on from the board? No. Okay. Uh, district reports. Um, May I comment on the consent agenda? Um, no, I believe this is the uh, this is the purview of the directors. From what I'm reading, a point of can order. You, can you confirm for that for me, Barbara? Point of order. I think. Can you confirm? Oh. If there's a 
Are you getting a comment on the consent agenda? Yes. Right. And I thought that it. was just from the no. directors. No. You have to take it from the point of order. No, you have to take comments from the point of order, Mark. Okay. okay. Yes. Point of okay. order. We have allowed um, community members to pull items from the consent agenda and comment on them oh. in the past. Okay. All right. Then, Mr. Holloway, please proceed. I want to comment on the minutes for the September 14th meeting. Uh, there's a place in those minutes where it's got some uh, words from me, and there's some asterisks in there. And um, I think that uh, what's missing at that point in the minutes is the context of what was taking place. So um, there was a particular interchange that involved at least five people, uh, actually maybe six. Uh, the, the first three were you invited public comments. A woman came to the podium to give her comments. Then she was interrupted by the district secretary. So that was the third person. And then I was the fourth person because I objected to the interruption. And then there was a fifth person who was Director Ackman objected to my objection. So it was an interchange that involved at least five people. And then at the, at the end, I, 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 when I reviewed the video, I saw that uh, Director Mayhood had also chimed in. Um, well, eventually, um, I heard President Smalley say the word correct and allowed the the woman who was here at the podium to continue. And I think I remember seeing that her timer was uh, reset to three minutes also. So it was kind of a complicated interchange, but what's in the minutes doesn't name the first three people at all. So you, you see my name, but you can't see uh, what I was responding to. So I think that uh, either you, one, one, one uh, way to fix it would be to put in one sentence that named all three people that said that uh, the board president recognized a member of the public. She began speaking, and then she was interrupted by the district secretary. So if that sentence were added, then I think uh, the context would be there for my comment and for Director Atman's comment. Um, and then at the end, I think it should actually say that you resolved the point of order in my favor. You used the word correct, and she was allowed to continue. Um, now, as an alternative to all that, I think you could just strike all that stuff and just put the comment from the woman because that was really the point of the meeting that you reached. You turned it over to public comments and she tried to make her comment and then all this other stuff happened. Um, but anyway, I don't think what's in the minutes there is accurate. It doesn't show the context. Then uh, the next time I spoke, a little further down in those minutes, um, it's, it's the sentence, um, he is disturbed. Okay, I did use the word disturbed. I said I was disturbed with the process. Um, but to say he is disturbed, I think is demeaning and uh, dismissive and, uh, to the point of being insulting, uh, to quote Director Mayer. Um, and then there's a third place where uh, uh, Ms. Lang uh, is, it says that she was confused, confused. Well, I heard her comment. And I don't think she was confused at all. She did say she was confused, but I think she was just being diplomatic. Uh, so I don't think that she's pretty thoroughly in the minutes either. Okay. Um, my suggestion to that is could you just strike those comments, Holly? From Which those, comments did you want from to those strike? Minutes? I don't support that. So if you, you need to make okay. that as a motion that and you need a second. Moved. That has to be moved and voted. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I appreciate the comments then. Um, I don't think anything needs to change on those, but I want to hear from the rest of the board if we need a. Um, so, so, if nobody makes a motion, then nothing happens. Um, so, if Lord Secretary accurately records Mr. Holloway's comments this evening, this evening, okay, then that will provide the necessary correction for anyone who reads more than one set of minutes. Right. Um, okay. And I think that's probably the best way May to do I it. May I ask a question? Sure. In that case, are you requesting that they be verbatim? 
whatever he said, I have to write down. Um, in this instance, yes. Okay. All needs okay. to be made as a motion and a second right. so the board can vote on it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I heard a, a suggestion from Jeff. So as a motion. Is that a motion? That's a motion, yes. Okay. I move that the district secretary uh, record Mr. Holloway's comments uh, this evening in the minutes accurately as a means of uh, correcting any deficiencies that occurred in the prior meetings minutes. Okay. I'll second that. Can I speak? Sure. Um, I'm not going to vote in favor of this motion, and I'll explain why. We um, queried the board council about that particular interaction, and she issued a memo, um, which I think that we need to take to the admin committee to form a policy about whether we ask people for their name uh, when they get up to speak, because according to the memo that was provided to us, that's within our purview to make the decision. Now, a, a person can choose not to give their name according to what we were told, but we have the right to ask. Um, so I think that the, you know, the appropriate next step, rather than change the minute, Minutes would be to take that uh, memo that the uh, our lawyer, our legal counsel, get, uh, provided to the board uh, to the admin committee, where we can consider recommendations to a policy for how we um, encourage public comment. Um, I, in terms of these comments specifically, I I don't think that that needs to be changed, and so I don't support that motion. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, I, I will vote no, because minutes um, should only be detailed um, when it's an action item. And this was far from an action item. Um, it was, you know, just yeah. a, 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 a not part of a very important discussion. And so um, the standard for minutes is that it's the action items that you focus on and the other things you just, I mean, we you could even not report it. But I don't want to get into a practice where we start micromanaging the minutes uh, yes. just because somebody doesn't quite like the way some phrase was in there, because that's not the way minutes are supposed to operate. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have a we have a motion. So uh, I'm, here. I'm withdrawing my motion. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. The the memo you were referring to from council. What what date was that? Let me look at my email. Uh, Barbara, could you answer that question? Uh, not not off the top of my head. I don't know the date of the memo. I, I would have to look it up. I'm not I'm not <laughs> seeing anything from her, but maybe it came through Holly. I don't know. But I I saw an email on it. I don't, yeah. I, I don't. Holly, I, I don't recall you, that. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Um, but um, let's for, deal with that offline. Yeah, mm -hmm. for that, I don't think we need to to deal with that in order to be able to get through the rest of this meeting. Right. Um, that's something that Jamie I'll is it, proposing for the admin saw. committee. Yeah, I'll. Time. I will clarify that I, it was sent to staff. It wasn't sent directly from me to each of the board okay. members. Uh, okay. From Holly. Um, but we don't need to go into the details of when that was. Jamie's agreeing or suggesting that the admin committee review that and revise additional in uh, board policy. So, um, okay. Uh, given that. Uh, I have a separate ahead. comment on the minutes. It's minor, but. My name has been misspelled in the minutes for years. I, could we please spell my name right? Yeah, yeah that's not trivial. <laughs> and this one? Yeah, in the September 14th minutes, my name is spelled J-A-Y-M-E. Do you mean like it is there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're repeatedly in the minutes um, at the top where you show directors present. It's J-A-I-M-E. And I, it seems trivial, but I've... It's, it's been years. <laughs> so it's not okay. um, So uh, that was consent agenda. That was the consent, yeah, consent agenda. You need to come back and if you have any other. Does anybody want to pull anything or any other comments on the consent agenda? Well, well, that was pulled in order to comment. So we need to have a motion to approve the minutes as is. If I there's not going to be any that change. 
consent agenda. Um, I'll second that. Okay. Well, actually, there was only one. Was there only one polled or was both polled? It was just the one. one. So the other one can go through. Right. We don't have to do anything with that. Just we have to vote to approve that one. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we have a, a motion uh, and a second. to approve. And I have seconded. Okay. All right. Uh, we have point, a motion then. Point of order. To go ahead. Are we going to go to the public for comment? Um, Barbara. Yeah, you, yeah, you have a pending motion. You go back to public comment. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, any comments from the public, either here or attending remotely? I see nobody uh, putting their hand up for that. Uh, so we have a motion then to approve minutes. So the motion is to approve the uh, September 14th, 22, I mean, 23 minutes as written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was seconded. Yes. Mm -hmm. President Smalley. Yes. Vice President Hill. Yes. Director Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. No. Director Mayhood. Yes. Um. Okay. Um, so, what about the rest of the consent agenda? Motion passes. Um, am I correct to move on to district reports now? Okay. Did you? Did you? The consent agenda. The the remaining portion of the consent yeah. agenda was approved, right? Yes, you yes. don't have to do anything. Yeah. yeah. Right. Nobody's pulling. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, district reports. Uh, does anybody want to ask questions on the district reports or the committee reports uh, from the board? Uh, Jamie? Yeah. No. Jeff? Uh, okay. Uh, with that, I think we can adjourn this meeting. Thanks to all of the public for attending. Thank you. And hanging in there. Thanks. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thanks, Barbara. Um, where would be appropriate?